All right. Hey, guys. Uh, so for reading today, we're going to be in lesson eight, finding the theme of a poem. So I have this uh, video broken down into a couple parts on this session for reading. Um, we're going to be first looking at finding the theme of a poem, and that is on page 134. And then after that, we're going to be going into uh, the Greek and Latin terms portion. And then we'll have a Maniac McGee, bleh, Maniac McGee discussion. I don't know what McGee is on this one, but it's going to be McGee. Okay. So let's go ahead and get going right here. If you did not hear me, it is on page 134 in your ready reading book. Okay. It is lesson number eight, finding the theme of a poem. So last chapter, we did find the theme of a drama. Uh, when we talked about the Battle of Atri. Atri. Trying for you, Bella. Trying to make it sound really good. Okay. So, but this one is the theme of a poem for this. Poems can get a little tricky. They're a little bit harder maybe sometimes to find the theme on there. So sometimes it's okay if you have to reread the poem once or twice. So poems can be pretty tough on finding it and get lost in the words. So that's okay. So for this one, Let's go ahead. I'm going to go the intro story today. Uh, tomorrow I'll be doing a second story, then a third, and we actually have four poems that we're going to be reading this week. Okay, so the first one's a very comic strip on the introduction for us today. So I'm going to read right here. Let me get my highlighter. Okay, I'm going to go right. Oh gosh, I'm going to highlight everything. I didn't mean that. Let's go right there. Okay. Ooh, uh, let's go ahead and always oh, upload. I'll just wait for it, or it's going to yell at me. Okay, that's done. Cool, moving on. All right, poems can express feelings and ideas on many topics. The speaker in a poem reflects on a topic by saying what he or she thinks and feels about it. You can use these reflections and other details in the poem to figure out the poem's message or theme. Down below, we're going to identify the theme of this comic strip by studying what the characters say and do. Also, think about how the comic strip ends. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and real quick talk about the story down below. Quick reminder what a topic is. It's just what the story is mainly about. Okay, to determine the theme, we have to combine details from the text with their own on there, okay? So we have to combine a lot of things with there to figure out from the experiences and make an inference on there. I feel like I jumbled on saying that. Okay, we'll come back again on there, okay? So let's look for details, make some good solid inferences. There we go, that sounds much better. Okay, so on this one, I didn't find the theme. Let's go ahead, uh, the first one, little girl. I'm stressed about my homework. Here, let me show you what I do when I'm stressed. What, you just shh. Wow. Thanks, buddy. I needed that. Okay, so take a moment here. Uh, hit the pause button. Take a look at some of those main details and how the characters act. Uh, make some side notes right here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little text box for me right here. What do you notice happening on here? Just notice some, uh... okay, hit the, hit that pause button right now and go ahead and see what you notice, what happens, things that were interesting, anything on that. Okay, go ahead and hit that pause button now. Okay, welcome back. So notice things, okay? I've got two characters, okay? You can be very blunt, very find easy ones. Two characters, uh, girl is stressed. Boy has some advice, okay? And then there's a sunset, okay? That's it, okay? 
that's all I kind of noticed those main things right there. Okay, it doesn't have to be too crazy intense. Let's take a look what we have on the next page now. Okay, we're going to go back and forth. You'll see me scroll up and down. Okay, what have you learned so far about using details to identify a theme? Complete the chart below, filling it out with details from the comic strip. Okay, so details, how they interact, uh, overcoming an obstacle, how they react to problems. We use those kind of details when we try to figure out a theme of a story. And sometimes the author makes it super obvious on what the theme is. This one was a little bit harder because there's not a whole lot of talking, not a whole lot of dialogue. Um, we have the characters just going back and forth and some conversation. That's, this one's a little bit tougher on things. So let's see what we can figure out here. Okay. Now, they already gave us the answer. This won't happen all the time, but this is nice. We have to figure out the details now that what got us there. Night can ease the worries of the day. That's what they have as our theme. Okay. Very cool on that and the sunset on there. So let's go ahead and fill in what do the characters say. So go backing up here. I'm stressed about homework. Let me show you what I do. Thanks. Okay. So let's go ahead, take a moment, pause this, fill in what you think the characters say, what the characters do, and how does the comic strip end? Go ahead and fill in your responses on those three right now. Hit that pause button right there. I'm going to take a drink of coffee. And hopefully you hit pause. Or are you just watching me drink coffee? Sorry. Sorry, did you not hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you hit that pause button and got some stuff done. So let's go ahead. What did the character say? We have girl says that she is stressed. Okay, hopefully you had something like that very similar. Okay, the other one says, the boy says he can help. I think that works, okay? or show you what I can do, or show you what he does, okay? Now, what do the characters do on here? You should have said something about sitting in the sunset. The characters sit and watch the sun set and watch the stars come out. Pretty good on that. If you said something about watching the sun go down, said waiting till nighttime comes, you are on the right, right track of things. Okay. The last one and how does a comic strip end kind of focuses on maybe how the girl feels now on this one. She says, thanks, buddy. I needed that. So we got to say something on how the girl probably feels now with this. Okay. So we could say, Oh, what is mine? Okay. The girl is no longer stressed. We have no idea what she's super stressed about. I mean, we don't have a, we know it's about homework. We don't know. Is she late on something having trouble with math? I don't know but we just know she's stressed about schoolwork, okay? So I think we have our good details that go night can ease the worries of the day. She's no longer worried so much about schoolwork right now. So she's a little bit more at ease, okay? Means relaxed. All right. So we have a couple things to remember moving on for a poem right here. And this wasn't really so much a poem. It was a comic strip. Okay, but moving forward, if you flip through the pages, you're going to see some poems on here. Some things to remember we're heading into tomorrow. Okay, where are my notes here? Uh, we're going to see a couple things here. I'm going to write off to the side. Can I write off to the side here? I'm just going to go right here. 
okay? So if you wouldn't mind writing a few things for me over here, I'm gonna put a couple things, some notes for us to come back to to see if maybe you guys uh, can help me remember this, okay? A couple things in the poem. We have these things called stanzas. We have, I'll put a dash there. We have, what else did I want? We have rhymes. I'm gonna kind of run out of room, so I'm gonna do this. Make it a little bit smaller, okay? And then just go for one. There we go. That might make things a little bit nicer, not too small now. Okay. Okay, we have rhymes, rhythm. And then imagery. Okay, so a couple things to add on here for us moving forward with tomorrow. We're gonna to come back and head these up a little bit again. Okay, stanzas, um, very similar to the, uh, the group of lines. Sometimes we call them like a poem paragraph. They're usually chunked together in like fours, twos. They usually get chunked in together. So I'm gonna call them the group of lines. Okay, so each sentence poem sentence is called a line and then the group of them together and then they have that big space in between. We call that a stanza for us. Okay. Uh, then we have the rhymes part. I know you guys are in fifth grade. We end with the rhyme. So rhyming words with it. Oop, make my box a little bit bigger. Okay. Or is that end with the same sounds? Okay. In case you didn't know. Okay, I, I bet you kind of do, okay? So my, my son loves rhyming, kills me. Every single thing I say, he has to rhyme with it, okay? Ooh, my music people, on the rhythm, I like to usually go with the pattern or beat of the poem, okay? So we can kind of get, get a little beat going on as we're reading it, we can kind of hear a song maybe in our head, or we just kind of go in a certain pattern of it, okay? Uh, mine says the pattern of beats or stress syllables in lines of poetry, okay? So I like the pattern or the beat of the poem, okay? I'm good with that right there, okay? On the imagery right here, uh, descriptive language. I like, I like taking the one that comes up here. That helps the reader picture what's going on or what the subject is, okay? Uh, imagery is descriptive language that helps the reader picture what's going on. Poems are really big on this. Uh, this is where it kind of kicks my butt on. Um, this is where I have I have to read a stanza maybe once or twice or a couple times, okay? So I, I have a hard time seeing what's happening sometimes. So that's okay. That's just me. So some of, some of you pick it up super easy. Um, the more you read, the more describing words you learn, and it helps you out on these poems, okay? Very cool on there. All right. So that is it for your ready reading portion. Uh, right now, uh, take a moment here, finish up the four word notes that I have right there. And then we are going to come back, uh, to your three subject notebook notebook. Um, will you please turn to the Greek and Latin section? We're going to have a new three to talk about right now. So I'm going to pause my video. Um, when you see it, it comes back, it should be something different. Okay. So go ahead and get your three subject notebook out right now. Okay. All right, guys. So right now you should notice my screen changed to uh, my Greek and Latin flip book now. Uh, I know you see a picture of me. Then, oh, I didn't block anybody out there with my icons. Good for me. Okay. So for on this one, we have unit seven. I like to move it, move it. That's the name of our next section on there. So you should be uh, in the Greek and Latin section of your three subject notebook. If you're not there yet, go ahead and hit that pause button right now so you don't get too lost on things. If you are there, go ahead and make sure that you have unit seven. I like to move it, move it as your title, okay? 
while some of you kind of jam out to the beat. I know. Just imagine me. You know I'd be dancing up front. No, I don't dance. Too cool. Okay. So, sorry, in my head. Uh, let's go ahead now. We're talking about moving things on this one. Okay. So, let's go ahead and put down our three new Greek and Latin terms that we're going to put. Make sure you set up your 3T chart right there. Okay. Have the root word, the meaning, and the origin. Okay. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more for us. Okay. Root word, meaning, and the origin. Okay. Our first one that we have is mob, mob, mot, mot, and that means to move, and it's from Latin origin on here. Think of a couple words that you may kind of associate those with. I'm sure a couple of you might have a few of these. Go ahead and pause this if you need time to uh, fill this out. Okay, I'm gonna continue on. Okay, make sure if I go too fast to pause, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. Believe me, I'll never know. Okay, so uh, whoop, mobile phone. That means I'm able to carry it. Mobile or maybe motion, M-O-T-I-O-N. Okay, it means that it's moving, able to move. Okay, so that's we get that form. Okay, next one. Pull that down there. You should have seen the next ones come up. Next one is tract, means to pull or to draw. Not the drawing like this, okay? Not that one, not that kind of draw. This one is kind of like pull out type of draw, okay? So like a tractor theme on there, to pull towards, sorry, it went a little sci-fi on you on this one, okay? But to tract, okay? Or retract something means to bring back. Okay, if you go ahead and hit pause if you need to. Move on to the next one. Uh, when we get into uh, this one, this will come up for science when we talk about human body a little bit with tend, tense, or tent. It means to stretch or give. Notice I gave a hint with the human body right there because you have these things called tendons. They're used to pull and give stretch onto things. Okay, tendons. Nah. Ten weird. Achilles tendon allows your feet to go up and down from your calf muscle. Yeah, freaks me out. Tendons are weird to me. Okay, uh, but those mean to stretch or to give. Right? So go ahead and hit that pause button if you need to. I'm going to show a couple words down at the bottom. Uh, you do not have to write any of these. I'm just going to go through a few of them. Okay, so. If you need a moment, hit that pause. If not, let this keep thing rolling. Okay. Oh, gosh, what happened? Oh, there we go. We're okay. I clicked a button. And then we make it bigger. There we go. All right. So we had mobile. That one was here. Able to move from one place to another. We talked about mobile phone. Uh, motivation. Forget about that one. The condition of being eager to act or to work, to motivate, to get to do something. Motive, a reason for doing something, okay? Tractor, a large vehicle used to pull farm equipment. Ah, the old tractor. Okay, detract means to reduce the strength, value, or importance of something. Ooh, man, to pull back, okay. To contract. To make something smaller or shorter, to become smaller. When you flex your bicep, the muscle contracts and gets shorter, so it brings it together. Attention, the act of or power or carefully thinking about listening to or watching something that's important. Notice the tent right here, okay? Didn't mean to do the double T on there, but tent. And this one, tend, right there on extend, to cause something such as, such as your arm or leg to straighten out or stretch. So extend, oh, something popped. Okay, moving on. Uh, tension, the amount that something is stretched or an uneasy feeling that makes it difficult to relax. I like that on there, okay. Contentious. Feel like I said that right. Contentious. Yes, that feels good. Okay. Likely to cause people to argue or disagree. 
Yeah. You will create a contentious environment if you keep bringing up these controversial issues. Whew. Yes. New word. Okay. Haven't said that word in a while. All right. So great words that we have going on. Uh, we'll have a little activity going with that. We'll have the three subject notebook on there uh, coming up this week. Uh, it should be the tract, I believe, on there. I believe it's the magnet. Drawing a blank on it. So make sure that you have your three subjects on here, though. Your, or I'm sorry, your three root words in unit seven. Uh, if you like any of these words, make sure you guys put those down into your three subject notebook down below. Anything you thought was interesting or a brand new word that interested you. Okay, uh, we're going to pause right here real quick and we're going to go to Maniac McGee for your activity here. Hang on just a moment here. I'm going to do this thing called the pause of recording. All right, guys. So uh, we will have some questions on Maniac McGee going into today. Uh, you do not have to read the chapter. I do encourage you to go back and reread a couple chapters if you need to, to help you out with some of the questions on here. Um, on these questions, I am going to copy from my normal PDF that I would do in class and put them into Schoology, but these are questions are going to be the same. They're all gonna be short answer. So let's take a look at them. I am going to pick and choose from quite a few of these. We're going from chapters six through nine, and then I'm gonna pick and choose some from the 10 to 14 on here, okay? I know we haven't finished up 14, so I'm definitely not going to uh, pull from those questions on here, but I am gonna pull all the ones from my six through nine section. And I think there's only, six of those so not too bad that should be all right so you guys got this one let's take a look here move my screen just a little bit okay now when we talked last left off we talked about a couple things here one of the things we talked about was the pickwell family so question one was how many children were in the pickwell family go ahead and just put me your answer on there and be pretty good right now you should be trying to remember that and i think uh you remember that with the ping pong table Okay, now, not how many family members, how many children, okay, not counting maniac at the table, just children in the Pickwell family. I would suggest to go back in that chapter and look, it, it says how many, so we should get that right. Number two, what did the mystery dinner guests do that angered the Pickwell children and caused them to blink and squint? Okay, so, we all know that it was a maniac that was the mystery dinner guest, uh, but they angered, they made the Pickwell children kind of upset and caused a little, uh, kind of a semi little fight with all the kids and think something here. What, what happened? What interaction happened with all of them? Okay. So something with all the kids happened. Okay. Number three, who is John McNabb? What? does he look like? So you have two questions on here, on who he is, who is John McNabb, and I'll be really disappointed if you get this wrong because that was a great chapter, the best chapter in the whole entire book, okay? And what does he look like, okay? Use some of those describing words that they use to describe him on there, okay? Uh, chapter seven, what was so unusual about the baseball game? There was quite a few things. Um, there's a whole lot of things you could say on there. Give me a few on that answer, okay? So what was the most unusual thing about the game? There's a lot you can choose from. So we should get a wide variety of different answers on that one, okay? Uh, number five, question on here. How did Jeffrey get his nickname? Okay, there actually was a chapter devoted to him getting his nickname. Number six. Why did McNabb's group stop at Hector Street? Okay, ooh, gotta, gotta fix that right there. That's a dash, should be a question mark. Okay, so why did they stop at Hector Street? Remember, the group's name was called the Cobras, and they were chasing uh, Jeffrey, and they stopped right when they got to Hector Street. Why did they do that? Okay, remember that part on there. Go back and look. Okay. Chapters 10 to, uh, I believe, 12 we got to. So I won't do anything more. I'll stop right here. Um, 
I'll probably stop at question three is what I'll do. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We're going to stop at question three here of those questions. So you'll have a even, not even, we'll go odd. Yeah. Okay. We'll go odd number of total of nine questions. Okay. Well, one of them's got two of them in there. So you got 10 questions, just nine sets. Okay. Number one on this portion, which would be number seven for you. What did Maniac do that was not acceptable? Uh, and during chapter 10, he did something totally not of that social norm during this time. What did he do? Okay, there was something that happened with him. Uh, hint has something to do with Mars. So there was something that he did that was a big, crazy no-no that was a not... I mean, when you think about it now, it's not crazy huge, but back then, this part, totally not part of the social norm. Number two, or sorry, six, eight, sorry, mind blown. Number eight, why do you think Mars Bar Thompson called Maniac Fish Valley? We talked a little bit very briefly on this one, but this one's kind of a what do you think question. We didn't do dive too much in it because I remember this question was coming up. I want to see what you think. Why was he calling him fish belly of all things to call him? Remember what Mars Bar looks like in the part of town and Maniac looks like in this part of town. Okay. So why is he calling him fish belly? And last one, number nine, which is number three on this part, but number nine total. Who stopped Mars Bar Thompson and Maniac from fighting? Okay, who stopped the fighting? Now, during this part, uh, we'll go with uh, whichever one on there because there was a couple times on here, okay? So there was a couple instances where Mars Bar and Maniac were about ready to fight, but there was a couple instances who stopped the fight, okay? So two possible answers depending on which one uh, you're talking about on here. Okay. Let's, we have two possible answers here, whichever one. All right. Uh, that should do it for reading. Um, please make sure that you guys, uh, submit that. Uh, this is not a Cami assignment. It's going to be on Schoology. So make sure you go onto that page. Uh, yes, that should be about it. Um, okay. So, Ready reading, should have got that done. Greek and Latin terms, should have got that done. Nod your head if you did that. I should see all of you nodding your head. I can't see you, why do you, why'd you nod your head? And then last one, answer those questions. Make sure you submit them. Full answers, please. Uh, there's a couple of them you can shorten up, but let's, let's, let's try and be better than that, okay? Full sense answers, okay? Uh, that it concludes the reading portion on here. Uh, we're going to check out and see how you get, uh, guys do on Tuesday when I come back. Okay. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Stop the share. Oh, my gosh. I'm still recording. Oh, my God.